Okay, so you're a beginner chess player or a lower intermediate player and you're just coming across these really annoying sort of openings and you just want to get something behind you so that you can play against them. So these no nonsense guides are about doing just that. Right? I'm going to give you the bare minimum you need to know to get past these annoying openings and just play sound chess. So let's have a look then. This one is the Wayward Queen Attack. The Wayward Queen Attack comes about after the moves E4, E5 and Queen H5 on move 2. So, just from the outset of this video then, I'm going to be advocating that you don't play the Wayward Queen attack. You know, I think the clue's in the title of the opening, basically. Uh, because my philosophy is always about playing logical sound chess moves. And this is not a logical sound chess move, because it brings the Queen out. It breaks opening principles by bringing the Queen out, you know, on move two. And, but, you know, that's totally up to you if you want to play the Wayward Queen attack. Of course, you can do. Uh, so, what White is looking for... With this move then is to obviously target in the e5 pawn straight away and they're also targeting f7 which they'll try and exploit later on and what white's really doing now is just hoping that you'll blunder on this move and there's two moves that will blunder in this position so really really what white wants is g6 uh, and after g6 white picks up the pawn with check there's a block of the check and then white picks up the rook on move four Okay, but that's just not going to happen because we're just not going to blunder like that. The other blunder that White is really, really hoping for is knight f6, hitting the queen, which is a natural idea, of course, because, you know, if you're bringing the queen out early, it's going to get hit with tempos. So the idea is right, but obviously it's just not defending this pawn. So after this move, White picks up a pawn and, you know, they're just in a better position because they're a pawn up out of the opening for no reason, a uh, block, and then the game carries on, really. Uh, so we're not going to do either of those things. So after this uh, move, instead of playing a poor move, you know, white plays a poor move and hopes that black will play a poor move, which is why it's a poor opening, uh, we're just going to play knight to c6 and defend the pawn. Okay. And after this move, what white will do is play bishop c4, renewing this threat of f7, or well, initiating the threat of f7, really. Looking for checkmate on move 5. And again, white is hoping that you'll overlook this and you'll play knight f6. Uh, thereby losing the game straight away. Okay, you know, this is like hope chess, hoping that Black plays bad moves. You know, this is why it's just not a sound opening. Uh, so we're not going to do that. So the move that you need to do is play g6. And the queen will retreat back to f3, uh, and thus renewing the threat against f7. All right? And maybe, you know, White is still hoping that you'll play something like this, and then you'll lose. Let's just put that on the board again. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to simply bring the knight to f6 in that position. Okay, and that's essentially all you really need. That's the bare minimum of what you need to do against this this move, uh, or against this opening, this wayward queen opening. So let's just look at those moves again. So e4, e5, queen h5, and then we, we're not going to blunder. We're going to just bring the knight to c6, defending the pawn, and then uh, white will play bishop c4. Again, we're not going to blunder, we're just going to play g6. Queens are going to come back, and then we're going to play knight f6. So that's three moves you need to sort of... You don't really need to remember the moves, because, you know, they are natural moves, defending checkmates and, and, and loss of material. But that's what you're going to do. That's the essential thing then. And then the plan, therefore, the continuation in this position is to Fianchetto, Castle, maybe d6 or d5 at some point, you know, and the game goes on. But let's look at a few things that could happen from here. So after knight f6, white really needs to prevent uh, this move, the knight coming into d4, gaining a free tempo on the queen. So you might see moves such as c3 or even knight e2 to prevent that, that idea, right? And if that's the case, then black's just going to carry on with the plan. Fionchetto, castles, maybe d6, and, you know, your game goes on, right? But if white gets overly ambitious in this position, and tries to renew the threat on f7, uh, and thus moving the queen three times in uh, five moves, is it? Yeah, five moves. Then this is just going to be a blunder for, for white, and you're just going to win immediately. Uh, so, what you're going to do to this, you're going to ignore the threat on f7. Double threat. You I mean you could defend it by playing queen e7, but you don't need to do that. All you need to do is whack out with knight to d4. So, what knight d4 does, it just ignores the threat. It hits the queen. It hits this square, which threatens the knight fork. Right? And this is coming about because white's just wasted too many moves by banging the queen around early on in the game. 
right? So it's, it's not a surprise that these sort of tactics appear in the position. If you just buy a plain logical sound chess, tactics will occur if your opponent makes daft moves. So uh, after this, then white will probably take with f7. You have no choice but to come to e7. And then, you know, white's in serious trouble because the queen's attacked, so the queen has to move, and the bishop's also under threat, right, in this position. So queen coming to c4 to hold on to the bishop. But after this move, you just kick the queen with b5, and then, uh, you know, at least you are up a piece and still threatening this fork, which also includes the queen. Okay, so that will be a good way to, a good counter refutation of, of this move, I think. So if, let's look again at another move. If, like I said, if white doesn't play either c3 or knight e2 and plays maybe like d3, that's the, the next most popular move. And this just invites knight d4, right? And this is not breaking opening principles by moving the, the piece twice because you're gaining a free tempo on the queen, right? The queen has to move. So this move is free. It's a free move. You know, it's a free tempo. And this is sort of teaching what a lesson, really, for, for bringing the queen out. And then it's a really sad affair for me, for, for white, really, because uh, it's not a good idea to come to e3 because then there's a knight fork, so that just loses on the spot. So white has to <laughs> like admit defeat and drop back which is just looking uh, not very good for, for white. He's banging the queen around the board and then just put her on a home square. Uh, and then in this position, it's black to play, and black is already up two pieces, right? And we've got space for Fusion Chateau. So after bishop g7, then black's just in a superior position. Okay, so uh, that's this guide. I'm not going to talk any more about this uh, opening. I'm not going to give you any more moves because I think you've got everything you need to successfully refute uh, this opening and get into a good chess game. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.